What is going on, everyone? This is episode 17 of Little Root Lessons. As always, I'm your host, Carter Noble, joined by our fantastic co-host, Carl Wilkin. What's up, man? Week one of Isle of Armor DLC being out has come and gone very quickly, and if you haven't been playing on Showdown, uh, you're kind of missing out right now because Showdown's updated for Series 5, and a lot of cool strategies have started to emerge. Uh, a lot of them being very... St- like terrain focused specifically. Yeah, there's there's a lot of terrain going on. Um, it seems like rain is really really dominant, and when it comes to weather, um, like personal experience, it seems like sand and sun have both kind of fallen off. Well, rain ha- rain has the new toys. Yeah, and, and I mean that could be exactly what it is: is people want to play with the new things. But I mean, I ran I ran into sand and sun while playing rain. It's just like. Well, luckily I have type advantage over both of these, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Like, cool, you have a Venusaur. I'm going to change the weather. My Kingdred now beats up your Venusaur. So, okay. Um, and same thing with Sand. I was like, oh, I changed the weather. Now I can Oak out T-Tar. Yep. T-Tar, Excadrill, just pick one. Um, notably, last week when uh, Showdown implemented the new rules... They didn't have the Justice Trio legal, legal, yeah, and they do now. So I've been I've been playing a lot with them the last oh probably the last three or four days after I finally saw that they updated it. Haven't been super impressed against them playing against them yet. Playing with them feels cool. Um, as long as your opponent doesn't have a good way to stop your beat up plan, yeah. Yeah, that's and that's the big thing. Is like obviously there's redirection. Um, the big ones being like NDD. Amoongus. Um, oh, yeah. Amoongus. Like, you also have... Uh, Togekiss is still, like, really good. Like, yeah. May not be as popular right now because all the new toys, but it's still very good. But, yeah, so, you know, you, you have tools to play against it. Uh, you have place to, tools to play with it. So, I've been I've been playing with it, and it's felt, it felt good. It's felt okay. Um, specifically, I think because of... How dominant the uh, the fairy types have been. I think Cavalion's the best of the three. By far, right? Uh, like being steel type, having access to stab steel moves against these fairy types, specifically Iron Head. Uh, but I think you get you get close combat. I, I play um, Sacred Sword, just because like it gets around the stat drops if yeah. you have Intimidate. So like getting around like that and still being able to hit Incineroar insanely hard. Um, because, like, Incineroar can be a problem for you because it is super effective against you. Um, but if you time it correctly and they go for, like, a uh, Darkest Lariat or a Throat Chop or whatever dark move they have and you switch in on it, well, not only did you negate their Intimidate by being able to not be in the, like, being in the back, but you also get the stat boost. Yeah. So, it's it felt good. Um, I personally play with Close com- uh, Sacred Sword over Close Combat. Especially when it comes... Uh, like, any anytime I'm doing it, I'm Dynamaxing. And it just feels insane when I do. The the number of games where, you know, I get to do my thing if I'm leading, like, Whimsicott, Whimsicott Cabalion or uh, Dragapult Cabalion. Like, it just feels fine. You get to beat up, and you get to either max their stream because it gets access to bounce. Mm. Uh, you get Iron Head so you can boost your defense. You get... Uh, of course, you get Sacred Sword, so you get Max Knuckle, so you can boost your attack even more if you need it. Um, other notable things, so you have Max Airstream for, like, Amoongus and Venusaur and Rillaboom. Um, you have Max Steel Spike for, like, uh, Whimsicott. Well, I mean, you have Max Airstream there, too, but, like, Whimsicott, you have it for Togekiss. It's probably your best move against Primarina. Uh, Primarina has been kind of a big problem for what I've been playing. Like, it it's good against Rain because it gets stronger in it. and it, Specifically, it's good against Kingdra because you can hit it super effectively. Yeah. With, like, yeah. with Moonblast. Um, I know you've adapted to Life Orb Kingdra. Yep. I'm, I'm still playing with Vest. I really like the extra bulk. Uh, that's, that's the big thing it comes down to is I just like the bulk. Kingdra draws a lot of attention to itself, so that I've been seeing more people playing Primarina, so having Kingdra be, like, 
get in, get out, deal some damage. Oh, it's down. Okay, now I can come in with Magnazone behind it. And Dynamax Magnazone. Magnazone has a weakness policy, and then I can just blow everybody up with Magnazone. Um, that's that's the latest iteration I'm playing with Cabalion, is I was running Life Orb on it. And, like, I mean, it was good, but there was a lot of times where he would get in, he would do his thing, and then he would get KO'd because of Life Orb damage. Because he doesn't have a form of recovery, to yeah. my knowledge. Um, so instead, I'm now playing Weakness Policy alongside Hitmontop, which doesn't get beat up, but it gets Mock Punch. Punch it. <laughs> Punch it real good. The, the biggest problem I have is uh, the latest version I'm playing added in Rillaboom to be able to kind of deal with the terrain wars that have been going on. Yeah. So, like, if they have Indeedy, the way my hit on top is built counters expanding force because I have wide guard. Which no one ever plays around. Oh, of course not, no. Because the, the number of times, like, I've had a Torkoal go for an eruption. I'm just like, nope. Or Heat Wave, nope. Or like, Surf. <laughs> they, or they or have, surf. you know, or... if they lead, if they lead uh, Hatterene and Didi, just like, they're just going to expanding force you. Nope. Usually. Yeah. <laughs> just like, nope. I, I don't care about anything you're doing. <laughs> and like, until they deal with this, I'm just going to cl- keep clicking back a white guard. <laughs> That's when they just whip out the daz- the uh, moon blast and just blow up your hit on top. Like, oh, okay, cool. You you took like four turns to figure out how to deal with this thing. That's fine. Um, what else have we been playing? I've been playing a lot with Crocodile. Crocodile has been impressive. I have played a lot against it. I have not played with it yet though. Crocodile, you slap an assault vest on this guy. Throw some special defense investment on him. He's real hard to take down. Does he get fake out or just scrafty? Uh, he does not get fake out. He gets knock off though. He gets knock. He gets. I don't remember what all he gets. Uh, my set is. I think it's close combat, darkest layer, lash out, uh, then rock slide, or and um. What's the last move? This one. This one. He does get knock off. Okay. Uh, and then it's this one. What's the last one? Where is it? What have I been playing? Do not know yet. That's incorrect. Aquatail? Um, I think it's a. I think it's an egg Here move. This might help. Cool, he still gets it. <laughs> yeah, still getting Aquatail is kind of weird, but what else? What is the last move? Oh. There it is. <laughs> oh, you're thunderfanging people. Is this on the. The non-terrain terrain team you've been playing. This is something else entirely. Okay, because I know you had your non-terrain Lapras terrain team. <laughs> okay, so that one—that one's really cute. Uh, high horsepower is the other move. I was running on some of them once in a while too. Uh, the fact that it gets high horsepower is uh, really, really good. Having access to that, plus being able to do grassy terrain stuff and not just get blown out by grassy terrain. Mm-hmm. It's been pretty decent. Uh, what else has been good? Marowak. Hello, the Marowak. Oh my gosh. Okay. I've seen a lot of it. Kingdra doesn't care. Kingdra doesn't care, but Dusclops does. Dusclops can get the... just. He can just get out. Dusclops really cares when you just walk up with a max 140 Phantasm and you just Oko him. Uh, I believe you thick club. <laughs> I believe if you are, I think minimum attack like the minimum attack you can have to blow up Dusclops or new Dynamax. I think is two sixty something. That's the minimum, and that's if they're that's if they're like full defensive bulk relaxed, like max HP, max defense. Uh, I I did my calcs for specifically that. Because sometimes that happens. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to Oko Dusclops every time, no matter what, because the rest of my team has a kind of a hard problem with it outside of Rillaboom just hitting knockoff. Uh, and then Crookedale coming and cleaning up. Um, but being able to just dynam- click the Dynamax button and then blow them up has been really good. Uh, also found out Poltergeist, if you're a max attack and they're not max defense, can also Oko. Just straight up poltergeist, just slap them around. Just take their Eviolite and beat them up with it. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, the team I have up on screen currently is the Trick Room, like, Primarina Rillaboom team. Uh, that Magnazone and Marowak and Crocodile kind of are helping to be supplement, and Porygon 2 is our Trick Room setter. I take it Magnazone doesn't get, like, Nuzzle, right? It's just Thunder Wave? Uh, it's just Thunder Wave. You could okay. play Thunder Wave, you could play uh, Substitute in that slot. Um, I don't know if I like Substitute with Sturdy. Uh, the Sturdy's supposed to be Magnet Pole. Oh, okay. I want to be able to lock in Ferrothorn. Okay. And then blow it up. That's, with that's a mon I have not seen at all, actually. I've been seeing it more now that Rain is getting popular because it just walls Rain. Uh, so one that I've seen a lot of with the Rise of Rain is Moxie Dose. Just power whip your your Polytoad. Yep. And the way my, my Toad is built at Ocos. Oh, of course it is. It's like, oh, that's really bad. <laughs> that's uh, really bad for us. I don't know if we can ever survive that. I don't know if there's any kind of investment we can do unless we unless they give us an assault vest version of de, of defense boosting. <laughs> <laughs> they give us an assault vest toad build that that boosts defense instead of special <laughs> defense. Hey, you know we we have a crown tundra coming. We're getting new items, evidently. Uh, probably some like random stuff or legendaries. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, we're gonna get the orbs. We're gonna we're gonna get no. Uh, I don't want any of them. We're going to get all the Mega Stones. No. <laughs> God, can you imagine Dynamaxing a Mega Mon? No, you get one or the other. No, that's not how Pokemon works. Not on works. the same Mon. That's not how Pokemon works. Yeah, please, please don't. Like, <sighs> Yeah, that's kind of been like the Trick Room idea. The Trick Room idea is like, Here's Porygon 2 or Dusclops or Hatterene and then pairing it with Ndidi or Rillaboom, something with like some kind of redirection or fake out. Uh, then usually, usually you have like Alolan Marowak as your one of your users, like abusers of it because it's so slow to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get to 45, which 45 is still really good for Trick Room. It's... Not like Dusclops or Torkoal level of slow or Hatterene, but you still forty five is still slow. The the good thing is like, of those you named that are slower than you, you kind of all of them. Oh yeah, no, you smash so every single one like, of them. Yeah, I don't I don't care about anything you just said. Like Hatterene kind is annoying, but I'm sure like a bone burn. You, to you the resist face fairy. Good. Yeah. yeah, you resist fairy. You don't really care. Also, you get to smash back with Poltergeist. Oh, yeah. I forgot that's neutral or super effective. Uh, I believe it's super fairy effective. Is I don't think fairy is a ghost. I don't know these things, man. You act like I talk on a podcast every week about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Marowak's been running Lightning Rod on the, with the rain teams when I do like rain, when I use it as like a rain abuser because my rain teams have all been like trick room based, which is weird. Like this one specifically here. Uh, having like Lightning Rod on a Mon that is just like not an Electric type Mon. Play some pretty cool mind games. Um, and then we have the Rain set up here. Porygon 2 is, another, is our Trick Room user again. I've, I've been in love with Porygon 2. Porygon's great. Porygon uh, 2 is by, been so good. It's by far the best Eevee Light holder I've seen since like after Dusk Ops. Um. Out. Speaking of random Eviolite users, I've tried Magneton. Oh, God. It gets bulkier than uh, Magnezone. And, like, your special attack's not that much worse. You are faster, which makes you worse in Trick Room, but it's been bad. <laughs> <laughs> Magnezone just does so much more because you can do, you can just slap a weakness policy or slap a life orb or... Anything on it. I've been running Discharge on my Magnazone to pair with my Alola Wax so I can just spread damage while my Wear Wax just sits there pretty. Yeah, see, that that seems real fine. Um, I wouldn't hate slapping Magnazone on Sand. And, like, trying that. Just be like, alright, Discharge Spam too. Like, be able to hit all the Water Bonds that give you problems. Mm -hmm. like it's it's a good counter to Rain. It's a good counter to Togekiss. Um, it can deal with opposing Sand Threats because you get Flash Cannon. Yep. So, like, it's good against everything except Excadrill, which, like, you get to trap in and just, like, whatever else you have just deals with it. I could, I could see it. It's something I haven't worked on, but it doesn't mean it's not viable. Having access to Magnapool is actually, like, kind of cool because now it's, like, Ferrothorn stuck. 
extra drill stuck. Uh, seeing less a sizer now that like we're getting in, into the thick of week mm-hmm. two here. And I know that's one that uh, you kind of like. It was on both of our original ranked teams, and I'm pretty sure it's on neither of them now. Uh, I'm on Magnazone because I liked having the electric type. <laughs> Which is funny because I started with Magnazone and cut it for uh, Marowak. <laughs> um, so I have like five different versions of this same team just with like one, one or two One variation. I have, I have a bunch of those too. <laughs> It's um, like, all right, let's try this for a few games. All right, this feels bad. Let's just try something else. Trying to figure out what like the best set for Sizer is right now. Uh, currently, max HP, max attack, and then like four into defense seems fine. That's that's what I've been running. Uh, uh, four into special defense, I think. Something like that. And then you have choice band. Um, Mainly I, because life orb was already taken. I, I don't hate choice band. Um, on... The team I was playing with, uh, King Drew is holding AV still. So he gets he gets yeah, life orb. He gets life orb, and that feels good. Choice Band also feels just fantastic. 300 power though. technician boosted bullet punch. Oh, close a lot of when, <laughs> I know when uh, when we first found out the Scyther was coming back, you're like, yeah, what what can we do with these? And you, you went to the kitchen or something. I'm like, I wonder how good this is. <laughs> and so I put it on. I'm just like. Oh, we, we get to 300 attack. Yeah. <laughs> Technician boosted anything is like Spatric people. Dual wing beat hurts. Um, I'm pretty sure Choice Man dual wing beat will Oko almost all Rillabooms. Um, yeah, it will. I think Oko 100% of Rillabooms. 100% I, I think the only thing that lives is probably Chopa Berry. Well, at least the first one just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does it... It strikes twice. But it doesn't cut... It, the... c- it cuts one. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't cut the second one. Hmm. It reduces damage one time. I would need to do damage calcs on that then. Uh, max With, like, HP, Rillaboom. max defense, whatever the flying berry is. What was it, Copa? Yeah, Copa berry. That might get us there. That might survive it. That might be the only version of Amoongus that lives too. But that was with Orb. I haven't done I haven't done choice band calcs. Choice band is pretty hard. It hits pretty hard. <laughs> choice band hits everything hard, and like it's still good against like psychic terrain. Yeah. Because you're you're able to resist them, and you can just like you turn out on on NDD and just yeah. If you just get out of there, bring in something else that can deal with Hatterene more effectively. I keep forgetting Hatterene has a uh, has magic bounce, so like I'll change the terrain and then taunt it. It's like, oh. It doesn't work. Oh, oh. This is... That, thank, you, you thanks, you screwed Lindsay yourself. Cott. You didn't do anything. <laughs> um, it, it got me once today. And, like, it, first time in quite a while. I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's how that works. I'll tell you what. Everybody needs to get on the min speed and DD plan because my min speed rule of them is just wrecking people. So this is not min speed. Not this, this has... one. No. Not this one. Uh, I, I was here. playing... I know we had a lot of people on Discord talking about it. And that is one thing that my Rillaboom does. It's just like, you, you don't need to be fast. Min like, speed. Like, to do your thing. <laughs> like, you're running Life Orb. I was seriously debating running uh, Fling instead of Knock Off with Lagging Tail. Um, <laughs> I have a uh, another set that's AB that runs high horsepower. It's also min speed. And it's much bulkier than this one. But we're also calc to be able to Oko Primarina with uh, two Grassy Glides. Then it's not an Oko. <laughs> Big Primarina. Big Primarina with two. Oh. oh. We hit, oh, we Oko Little Primarina. Big Primarina in two. Oh. So we Oko Little Primarina. Oh. So there's, there's no reason to go full attack here. No. Nothing, nothing you can, you can think of. Not unless you can... Not unless you're really worried about dealing damage or something that resists grass. See, I know... Um, I know you were talking earlier about... Uh, you've played against a lot of, like, AV, Porygon, Z. Yeah, that one's fun. Adaptability, AV, Porygon. Uh, is it adaptability or analytic? Uh, adaptability. It gets adaptability? Hidden ability? I believe so. That's weird. 
That can't be right. Adaptability is over trace. Uh huh. So you get to do salt vest, adaptability. And try then attack. Then you just slap these on there. Put thunderbolt. Try attack. Try attack was one that I I played a lot with on on Porygon too. Uh, you can slap discharge on it. Dark pulse is one I've seen very popular right now. Um, which does I it get focus blast? I don't think so. That's one I ran on Alakazam to do with Incineroar. It, man, when it hits, it it's fantastic. Um, what's another one that the, I've seen? Uh, ice Beam. With when they start writing Thunderbolt and Tri Attack and Dark Pulse, I haven't seen much Ice Beam. I see more. Um, it's like Psychic. Okay. Because it's taking a, it's taking advantage of everyone's Psychic terrain. Okay. Like, uh, I I usually see it paired with an ND. Is why he's usually oh, why okay. it's there. Does it get expanding force? I'm no, God, not. no. Okay. No. Okay. Thank God, no. <laughs> Thank God, no. <laughs> Please, no. Um, I've also seen very bulky Porygon Z that support mode with like eerie impulse. Does it get screens? Uh, we get reflect, and that's it. That can't be right. That's what it says. We get reflect. Why don't we get light screen? The same reason what's their names only get light screen. It, they're not exclusive to each other. Oh, I figured if you got one, you got both. Nope. They oh. are not exclusive to each other. That's real but weird. But uh, the support version runs uh, Eerie Impulse, Icy Wind, and then like Ally Switch, and then uh, like Dry Attack. It's super cute. The number of people I've got uh, with like Ally Switch, uh, like sitting Porygon, Porygon 2 and Alola Whack next to each other, is like. All right, ally switch. I'll take your shadow ball. <laughs> this will take. I, I this will take a fake lot. out. Yeah, I've done that a lot. Dude, people never see it coming, and I don't know why. I haven't quite figured it out either. Um, another one is like they're gonna throw a fighting type into it. I just ally switch while well, Marowak on the other side. Like Marowak eats the fighting type move, and ally, and then Porygon yeah. just like gets out of out of harm's way. Yep, had it had it happen multiple times. It's like, all right, thanks. That was awesome. Um, let's see. What else have we done? What else have we played with? Um, <laughs> Rising Voltage. Um, the, back to the Lapras Terrain Setter. So Lapras has been, like, really cute because just, like, it sets, uh, it sets off screens. It sets uh, electric terrain for you. It sets rain for you. So I have decided to slap it with uh, Alola Raichu and then, like, a decent like rain user on a team and it's cute it's very cute uh not the greatest thing in the world <laughs> but cute <laughs> but very cute uh no one expects like when you throw thunderbolt out that raichu is just gonna come out and then just be faster than everything on the field does rotom get rising voltage i don't know that's one I haven't... Like, dude, I, I couldn't actually tell you the last time I played against Rotom. I, I can't tell you the last time I even saw Rotom. I don't know if it does. I don't think it does. That'd be really disappointing. Let's look at Rotom. It does. It does, it does get okay. rising voltage. Okay, cool. Interesting. I was going to say, if it doesn't get it, that's going to be sad, right? <laughs> yeah, like, it's... It's, like... The premier electric type you would that, that a lot of people think of. Yeah. Um. But the the fact that like Alolan Raichu, like Alolan Raichu man has been real cool. Cool. You didn't realize Magnuson. I'm just it. making sure that it's just like all electric types get it. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Um, that's what it seems like at least. I but, haven't done this yet, but I've been waiting. I've been waiting to do a salt vest Magnuson with body press. I haven't done it, but I want to now. It, it it's probably hilarious. Just gyro ball, body press, heavy slam. Nah, 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 nah. Do we get a? No, get that wild charge in here. No. We're being physical. Our attack is terrible. We're being physical. The only reason we use body press as a physical move is because our defense is one thirty five. Physical. Investment. No. 
The physical move you could have is this one. Steel roller ain't bad. You'd have that one. I've seen a lot of Azumarill running around with Steamroller. Steel roller? Yeah, whatever it's called. <laughs> it's been it's been cute. We're gonna blow ourselves up. Because <laughs> I'm like, alright, you're gonna belly drum in front of me. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Change my mind. I'm gonna blow you up with steel roller. Uh, I haven't seen it much of it actually outside of like the random Azumarill. I haven't seen I haven't played against a single Terrakian. I think everyone has come to the conclusion that Kapalian is just better. Uh, every time I see Terrakian, Kindred is to Oko it. Yep. I think I think the big problem right now is there is too much rain going around to be able to, to deal with it. Maybe that's a reason to play Verizian. Hurricane. Four times weakness to flying. There's a reason Verizian has always been the worst one. Choice scarf so we're faster. Are you actually faster? I'm, I'm assuming if we have choice scarf, we are. Speed is 108. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be faster then. We get to 240 with choice scarf if we're, if we're neutral nature. If we're positive nature? Uh, we should get to 250 something. 260, maybe? 176. That'd be... Uh, 252. Should be. And then Kingdra... Kingdra's max speed is... Oh, yeah, we're faster. Tim timid. Oh, yeah, we're faster. You gotta remember, Kingdra doubles. Yeah. Does it choice Scarf? Scarf is 1.5. Oh, this is way bad. I was doubling. <laughs> <laughs> but who runs max speed kingdra i don't know <laughs> I, I don't know who could be running max speed kingdra right now i, I don't i don't know uh this set right here is specifically set up to where uh you can outspeed t-tar a uh, max speed t-tar outside of rain okay which has been getting very popular for some reason i have no idea why I've seen a, i know this is gonna sound real weird i've seen a lot of specs t-tar and i don't get it I, I don't understand. I don't know. Which, people people have been probably like, here's trick and it's like, try to take your item, but then they get stuck with their own with choice specs and they're just like, whoops. I mean that's something that Zor has been doing. Like, I know uh, Quentin has been doing that. It's like, you know, I, you know, the best part is is like, people don't realize how quickly like they don't immediately realize that it's the arc until it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know... I don't see how, though. Yeah, like, as soon as you see that trick, you're just like, oh, that's that's not right. This like, is... Something's bad. <laughs> I just don't see how it's just like... The minute you it should... You should just hit expanding force, and the minute it doesn't do damage, it's just like, whatever. I've had... Uh, I've had my opponent... Um, they immediately dark pulsed. I was like, Rillaboom doesn't get dark pulsed. That's, that's, something's not right here. Hit <laughs> it. <laughs> so, you know, it took a sacred sword to the face and went down. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's like, when like, you see it in team preview, it's super easy to play around it. It's like, it's like, you just guess once. If you hit up your right, cool. If you're not, then you just get to go again and blow it up. Like, so something's not right here. No, nah, the funny part is like when they put a, when they copy them on it, like you want to fake out, and you just fake out it. <laughs> but see, that's why I think like the best ones you can do are like ghosts, because you're like you're not gonna get hit by fighting. Yeah. You're not gonna get hit by fake out. It's like you have the highest probability it feels like to be able to sustain your illusion. Uh, your illusion. If you're a ghost. The problem is, is like, all the good ghosts right now are insanely slow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Ololowak. Dusclops. Um, oh, uh, wait, there's, there's Dragapult. Yeah, you but can like, copy Dragapult. But then you're not fast. <laughs> <laughs> you're not Dragapult fast. Yeah, no, there's no middle speed to your ghost that's good right now. 
I was gonna say Gengar, but like Gengar's not played. Gengar's also fast. <laughs> yeah, but not like Dragapult fast. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. <laughs> it's faster than Zorark for sure. No, so that's when you <laughs> copy Dragapult and you have Choice Scarf on. There you go. <laughs> Choice Scarf Zorark. This is the new meta. Then we can trick our Choice Scarf and we'll be fine. And no one will ever see it coming. Well, when you set up Trick Room. Does Dragapult get Trick? I don't think Dragapult gets Trick. I, I doubt it. Do you know Dragapult gets zero of the new tutor moves? None of them. Huh. I didn't know that. You're welcome. Tipping of knowledge for you. Dragapult gets zero of the new tutor moves. I'm surprised it doesn't get scale shot, but it has dragon darts. So uh, like... It's already the fastest Pokemon in the game. Let's not make it faster. But Carl, it's basically Lightning McQueen. <laughs> uh, what I'm surprised it doesn't get is Poltergeist. I'm surprised it didn't yeah, get that. Same, actually. Uh, I'm glad it didn't. Uh, oh, Poltergeist same. is max. Would is the max move for Poltergeist is 140. Is that the like strongest it could be? That is the strongest like ghost max move it can get. Yeah, is 140. That's insane. Because the only thing higher than that is like uh, the Kanto starters, their signature move, and the only thing above that is the Galarian starters. Um. The 150 range is all the wildfire move, like wildfire, vine lash, and cannonade, and then max strike from Giga Impact specifically. Or hyper beam. Or hyper beam. Okay. Uh, which you don't see hyper beam that often. Sir, sir, Sylveon would like to Sylveon talk to you. Sylveon turns that into max starfall. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm saying max strike. I'm talking about specifically hyper beam. <laughs> um, and then the Alolan, the, the, uh, Galarian starters, their signatures are all 160. Which that's real high. Which that is currently the, sh- the highest total in the game. Uh, Explosion? I believe Explosion gets right down. No, I meant like in general. Oh, in like general. Base. No, I'm talking max moves. Okay, general. okay. Yeah. I, They're the highest max moves we have. Misty yeah. Explosion goes to 200. Yeah. Boom. Special. As pointed out earlier in the week from a from our last one. I guess we thought it was physical. I th- I thought I noticed it was special. I don't remember. I don't know, man. Who knows? That was last Tell week. me I'm wrong. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll continue to be wrong. I'm not good at this. But yeah, that's kind of been like the rundown of the meta here. I haven't seen anything done with like... Like, sand or sun yet. I haven't seen anybody really abuse uh, terrain, like electric terrain really hard yet. Just because Pinchurchin is so slow. It's so bad. It's It needs not, Coco. It needs Coco. It needs... But, like, um, I don't want Coco because it's going to get rising voltage. And that's going to be insane. I mean, Pinchurchin isn't terrible. There's... I wish we had, a, like, a better electric terrain setter. <laughs> um, I don't know if you follow Moxie Boosted on, on Twitter. No. Um, he was talking the other day about how he wants to see Cartana come back. And for them to give it Grassy Glide. <laughs> Goodness. Um, yeah, Pinchurchin is like, not. it's like a speed is 15. What's the highest we can get? 67 neutral means we it's get to about 74. 74. Oh. Should be 70, 73 or 74. 73. Okay. So we can get to 73 with a, with a beneficial nature. Why are we trying to make this thing go fast? I'm just trying to see, like, what's, what's the fastest we can get it, because I know how slow we can get it. <laughs> see, here's the thing, is we can already go slow. Like, you're setting your train first. Well, last. You're getting your terrain. You're getting your terrain off. The problem is, it's just like, are you going to be able to do something with it after you've set your terrain? It gets sucker punch. That's not going to do anything. <laughs> That does not, it's not, it gets rising voltage. You want to hit it with rising voltage. Yeah, I'm saying, like, if you wanted to do something, put a balloon on it. Yeah, make this, make this min speed. Uh, I believe the slowest we can get. It's 20 something? Yeah. It's, I think it's 15. Or 18. Yeah, 18. Man, 18 real slow. Uh, I think the only Pokemon slower than this is Pikumivu, whose base speed is 5. Shuckle is 10, I think. Shuckle is also fine. Okay, I, I was... I couldn't remember. 
PYU is PYU. Yeah. Yeah, they're both, both five. five. Okay. Say so. Shuckle and Pukamubu are both five. They are by far some of the slowest Pokemon in the game for sure. We. Uh, we also have Munchlax at five. Yep, that probably. one I knew. Trap Pinch at ten. Did not realize that Gossifleur and Eldegloss were supposed to be like Trick Room ones. I. How slow is Eldegloss? Uh, forty, I think. Man, that's real bad. 30 or 40. Okay, typing. Don't don't work it all for me. Oh, it would help if you do the thing. Oh, it's 60. It's much higher than I thought it was. Okay, so I mean, that that's a significant jump from like 20 to 60. Which we can get it to about 60. We get to 50, yeah, 59. 59 ain't bad. Um, the problem is, like, does Eldegoss actually do anything? Oh, God, no. Okay, cool. Just wanted to clarify. No, it does nothing. Um, something I have noticed on Sand, the couple times that I've played it, is Duskmane, um, I mean, not Duskmane, Dusk Form Lycanroc, mm -hmm. uh, which we, we actually talked about a couple episodes back, of it being, like, moderately playable. Yeah. And, like, I, I've seen it. Um, it's not, like, I wanted to proc policies with it, and it's not doing that. It's just, like, a generic good sand team. But my my big problem is it doesn't seem to solve any problems that sand has. Mm -hmm. So it's just, like, there. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just look I was looking at Zorak app because we were talking about. It. I forgot it gets burning jealousy. What else gets a uh, scorching earth? That's a move I have not seen at all. Uh, scorching earth is there's a long list of ground types for sure and fire types. Or scorching sands. Yeah, it's all the same. It's close enough. Uh, Charizard, Ex Excadrill, Incineroar, Crocodile, Marowak, both feral forms. Uh, Palisand, Rhyperior Sand, slash Torkoal. Rhyperior, Palisand getting it is actually kind of cool. I've yeah, been it's, seeing Palisand. Its special attack is actually pretty decent. It, it, like, it has decent special attack, and it, it wants, like, to be the bulky defensive wall. Arcanine getting it is kind of cool. Yeah, you can do, uh, cool stuff with that. Uh, Colossal getting it means you don't have to run Earth Power as your ground-type move anymore. Yeah, you can have a, an Earth-type move that actually does something. Uh, Claydol getting it's kind of cute. Diggers be getting it is kind of cute. You want to talk about cuteness? Uh, Golurk gets it. Rapidash gets it. Turtonator. <laughs> no one's going to play with this. Yeah, but okay. In, in actuality, the there you go. Here you go. Hapowdon. No. <laughs> Look at your special attack. Throwing the burnout on your. For your defensive wall, it's like putting Scald on one of your support water mons. You want the burn. That's what you're after. Yeah, but it's only a 30% chance, right? That's better than no percent chance. So back to Turtonator. <laughs> Did it get ground coverage before this? Uh, I believe it got the full dose. Okay, did it get good ground coverage before this? Um, Earthquake. Okay. Which I'm assuming also means it gets high horsepower? Uh, that is not inclusive at all. Unfortunately. Oh, Stomping Tantrum. That's, that, one, that one's not bad. Yeah. Does it get anything cool? Does it, like, good ability anything? It, it, it literally only gets shell armor. Yeah. I'm so disappointed. You can shell smash people? No, this is your counter to Togekiss. They can't crit you. They can't crit you, and you uh, take neutral damage from fairy. Got him. I've been seeing a lot of max attack, uh, max special attack Togekiss. I have two, and uh, Kabalion just goes big in front of him and doesn't care. Uh, Kingdra does the same thing. <laughs> kind of just throws that flash cannon at him and just... <laughs> the number of times, uh, I, I've for whatever reason, I don't know how, but my Whimsicott has been outsped by Togekiss... I am max speed positive nature Whimsicott, and I've been outsped, and they've got the crit off on me. Hmm. It's like, well, that's not 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 the crit, the flinch from air slash. 
It's so annoying. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of Guts Heracross, too, while we've been playing. I have not seen a single Heracross. I have seen a lot of Guts Heracross, specifically just, like, high horsepower, mega horn, uh, and then, like, fighting type move, plus, like, protect, and then flame orb. There was something today, I can't remember what it was, um, but it definitely set up a swords dance in front of me. And I, I wish I could remember what it was. How high can we go? No, no, no. Uh, 177 adamant makes us... 194. So... He... 97 on top of 194... Two, uh, two, a uh, one, two ninety one, with guts. That's a uh, real high. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what what this was at uh, Swords Dance in front of my face. I'm just like, well, that's cute. Oh, it was Scolipede. Oh, I died to Scolipede. Yeah. <laughs> Speed boost. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It was at Swords Dance. Uh, I went for beat up. Uh, you know, beat up my, my Kavalian. They swords danced. I'm like, well, that could be bad. Yeah. The next turn, I set up Tailwind. Uh, they go big, I go big. I Oko their partner. And they kill my, my Whimsicott. Uh, the next turn, they then killed my... Uh, my Kavalian and my follow-up. Like, it's, it's Dynamax got three, three KOs. Damn. It's like, all right, well, Kingdra, <laughs> do do the thing, and it outsped me. <laughs> um, things that were not as popular before DLC came out that we already had access to, I've been seeing more Gudra to answer rain specifically, uh, because you get hydration and you don't get o code by Kingdra, but you can o code Dynamax Kingdra back if you're Dynamaxed. Um, I've definitely seen a downtick in Dragapults. Which I'm not For complaining sure. about. Yeah, Dragapult. I, I don't know if it's just new toy syndrome or if like Kinder being in the meta is like affecting how this works. Uh, but definitely seeing less Dragapult. Uh, definitely seeing less Togekiss. Um, mm-hmm. I, it, the last day or so, I've seen more Togekiss than I norm like the last week I have. Um, but definitely still not like the sixty percent or whatever it was. Yeah, like. it's definitely less for sure. Um, I, According to Picolytics, the new the new big thing at like forty percent is Rillaboom, which doesn't surprise me. No, Rillaboom, Rillaboom getting Grassy Glide plus having access to its hidden ability is huge. It it really is what Rillaboom needed. Like it it Rillaboom is probably the best starter by it right now. It's just like being it's the it's the most used for sure. It's the most utility. It's the most. Uh, I guess you could say adaptable because, like, Inteleon and Cinderace have been kind of shoehorned into these boxes. Cinderace is, like, focused on Libero. It, it yeah, Cinderace to... is really good for hyper-offense teams. Like, it, it, the, the teams that need to go fast to be able to do their thing, it's really good on. Until it finds Inteleon, it's really good. And, like, Inteleon's not being played, like, in all actuality. Like, you can deal with Kingdra because you're faster than it. Um, especially, like, if you're able to... Like, if if you're able to manipulate the weather, then you're going to be faster than it. Or you get a tailwind off, or just some way of being able to deal with it. Um, you can reasonably change your type before they're able to hit you. Yep. And, like, the bet... Playing against Cinderace has been moderately annoying, in my opinion. Just because, like... You never know what they're going for. Because, especially if you don't have something that's immune to something else, like, they could just change their type on a limb to prevent you from hitting them super effectively. Oh yeah, for sure. And and that's the annoying part of it. As the Cinderace player, it's really intelligent. It's really difficult to, like... It's a lot of mind games of knowing what your opponent's going for and how to play around it before they are able to react. Uh, it's a high ceiling in the world mm-hmm. of like uh, 
like just odd and things like that. It's a, it has a very high ceiling and it has a fairly high floor too. It's not hard to play the Cinderace, like Libero Cinderace either. Mm -hmm. Like you can you can definitely just like pick up some Cinderace and just go and play with it and you'll you'll do you usually will do well because it's just a fast, strong, powerful mod. I mean, hell, I was I was playing with Blaze Cinderace, man. Like at yeah. one point, and now now you give it debatably one of the best abilities we've seen in who knows how long. Uh, since protein. Well, you know, that was what five years ago now. I don't know. Forever ago, it's like yeah, this is this is insane. So just being able to have that niche in this format has been really impressive. Yep. Um, granted, like we were saying before, it's kind of shoehorned into being libero though. Like mm -hmm. most of the time when you see it. You know what to expect. You expect Pyroball, you expect Iron Head, you expect Bounce. Sometimes it has high jump kick. Uh, I think I saw one with Electro Ball, which was weird. That's cute. It's cute until you realize that you're still going to get smacked around by that ground type move that's across the way. Mm hmm. I, that's the thing is like the ground type is like really good, but can be played around with Bounce. Mm -hmm. But you, your opponent can also play around that as well. That's like that's that's the cool part is just like it still has weaknesses, like rock and ground are still really good like moves to use against it because it either, either they're shoehorned into going into high jump kick, and you're like you can keep them there and they just boost their attack but don't boost their speed, or you can get them while they're going into flying and you can hit them with a max rock ball and KO them, or you can hit them with a max ground when they go into steel spike to boost their defenses. So it's still, Cinderace still has play around it. Um, Teleon's kind of fallen off the face of the earth. Some people, st some diehard people are still trying to do uh, Sniper and Teleon things. And it's it's seen some success. Being fast, being faster than Cinderace means you answer one of the most prevalent fire type mons in the meta right now. Um, you also can definitely deal some damage to sand. Uh, you take advantage of all the rain being set up around you. Um, I think, I think in Teleon gets Dark Pulse. Does it get Dark Pulse? I believe so. I know it's Shadow Ball. I don't know if it gets Dark Pulse. I have to double check. I have it sitting here in front of me. I can just pull it up. Come here, Inteleon. We do get Dark Pulse. Cool. So, I've seen people running Dark Pulse and then, like, Snipe Shot and an Ice type move of some sort and shape or size. Blizzard, Icy Wind, whatever they've really been needing to run. Just pick a pick one. Just throw one out there. Um, I haven't really seen Shadow Ball as much because uh, like not being able to hit normal types is kind of important. Um, I've also seen them running Air Slash when they try to go big and they can just Air Slash their and they can max Airstream. Max Airstream has been getting really really popular too. Yep, speed speed control is really really important. May that be Trick Room, uh, Paralysis, and like man, the <laughs> I played against a Gyarados yesterday. Um, and my Polytoke went for a Scald because, like, that's the only damaging move I have on it. Got the burn. I'm like, all right, cool, we're in this game. Lumberry activates. I'm just like, oh, God, we're dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like, I think Paralysis is starting to be really, really important again. Um, so your Magna Zones, your Raichus, stuff like that. that Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl is another really good one. My big problem with Grim Snarl is it just gets O-code by like everything, it feels like. Choice band, bullet punch, sizer, O codes, Grim Snarl. Yeah. I think Life Orb does too. It does. Um So Just pop them. Then the big play is to run uh Beery Berry. <laughs> And just take the hit. It's probably still not good. Uh, you probably go down to probably about twenty five percent HP, which then you're you're kind of like, why'd I play this if I'm just going to go down anyway? Yep. Or just when you set up reflect. <laughs> that one might help you. Reflect we, reflect the berry berry might help you. Are we going down the rabbit hole too far yet? A little bit. Okay. Um. Talonflame has kind of just, like, 
fall and flat on its face, which we kind of expected. Same with Volcarona. They both kind of, like, they were great for singles, but not so much for the doubles meta. They just kind of got off the ground. I have tried. I have tried. I have tried to make Volcarona good. I tried to make Sizer good, and it's great for singles, but Sizer is, again, has that same problem that Volcarona and Talonflame have. They both have a very easily exploitable four times weakness, and... And, like, the worst part is, is, like, I was running Charty Berry Volcarona. So, like, I can live a rock move, right? Yeah. Well, then you just get hit with a max airstream and you die. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, there's, you get hit by a max airstream. In the case of, uh, in the case of Sizor, there's, like, no, like, secondary weakness you have. It's just, you just got to avoid fire. <laughs> avoid sun like, like the plague. Which, it, it's actually easier to do when you have rain on your team and you pair it with a Politoed and a rain dancing Porygon too. It's actually really easy to do that, but it's it's just not enough in most situations. Like, if Sand becomes popular again, Size is going to be good. 100%. 100% Agreed. of the time. Agreed. Uh, if rain is popular, Size will be Size will be fine. It's not going to be the greatest. Uh, you'll be able to take out Rillabooms. You'll be able to take out Amoongus's on those rain teams, which which is probably part of something that you really need to do. Uh, but if we go back to Sun TR just being like the main thing, Sizer's not going to be no. able to hold a candle to any uh, of that. The biggest problem with Sizor right now is like the the terrain wars that are going on. It's like Psychic Train is really popular, and you just get blown out by Psychic Trains because you can't bullet punch them like you want. Yep. So it's just like, all right, well, cool. I just neutralized one of your best moves against me, and now it doesn't matter. That's why we were in band U-turn to get the heck out. <laughs> Which, dude, sounds great. Like, in, in all actuality, um, even even my life orb set, it's just like, yeah, U-turn out of there. Get the, out. The problem is, is when they're pairing it with like, Alakazam, and Alakazam is way faster than you. Yeah. And Expanding Force does like 6,000% to you. <laughs> um... I have survived with the max HP, max attack builds. I have survived on about 30% to get out. And then you turn usually, oh, because the because they on your way out the mm-hmm. door. Um, I want to I wanna pair Scizor next to Hitmontop, just to get that white card boost. I don't know if it's good. Because, like, it, the, the thing is, like, it takes care of Heat Wave, which is a big problem. It takes care of Eruption from Torkoal, which is another big problem. Um, it can deal with the expanding force shenanigans. So, I don't know. I, I tried triple axle hit on top. Yeah, how'd that go? Uh, I hit the first one, and then the second one missed, and I haven't played with it since. <laughs> <laughs> I've been seeing triple axle weaviles pick up in singles, for sure. It's been popular there. Um, not so much in doubles. I think the closest I've seen it in doubles is one of our user, one of our uh, listeners has shared a, an Alolan Sandslash build. Mm-hmm. And it did cool things there. Uh, you never land. You never need to land a third one because after the second one, they're usually gone. <laughs> yep, I I hit the first. It did like twenty percent, and then I missed the second one, and I was sad, and I took it off. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I think that's actually when I put wide guard on, and wide guard has been really good, man. Is there anything else? Oh. Have you seen the... Uh, the only time I see Dragapult anymore is when it's paired with a Comfey. What is this doing? So, Triage gives you priority for your healing moves. Uh-huh. Draining Kiss is a healing move. Draining Kiss proxy weakness policy. Uh-huh. Yeah. That, that's that's it. That, that's, that's the length of it. Also, you get, like... Really good healing moves. You get Helping Hand. You get Trick Room. You get After You for when you need an anti-trick room. It's cool stuff. Um, The Psychic Terrain shenanigans. I've seen a lot of Kalucha. Which, I mean, it just slaps on that team. Drift Blum. Yes, yeah, Drift Blum's another good one I've seen. Um, I haven't seen Slurpuff yet, but I'm waiting for it. <laughs> waiting for it. Did you know? Slurpuff gets Misty Explosion. Yes. <laughs> we need to pair it with the Weezing and just blow everybody up. I did get hit with the uh, 
the neutralizing gas corrosive gas today. How'd that go? I won that game. That's good. <laughs> it was not it was not easy, but I won that game. Yeah, wheezing being able to just turn off items and abilities now is is really good. Um I led Cabalion and I, I was able to proc my weakness policy before they got the corrosive gas off. Mm-hmm. And then they just don't take a max steel spike. <laughs> Yeah, they they went away, and it was it was great. I think that pretty much does it for Pokemon from the like meta like standpoint right now. Um, the rest of the stuff, Urshifu is still not good. Still on my low list I have of not Pokemon. Played, like I haven't played with it, and like playing against it, it just never does anything. Uh, I see it get like if I lead wrong, it can punish you very quickly. But, like, if you just play around it, you respect the Pokemon, and then it doesn't get to do anything. Um, I have not been impressed with Galarian Slowbro. Cantonian Slowbro, though, I have been messed up a lot by. I have actually been very impressed with Galarian Slowbro, specifically weakness policy versions. Uh, I haven't seen these. You Dynamax and just survive whatever super effective hit they throw at you, and then you turn around and just blow them up. So I pulled up uh, Picolytics just to look here. Yeah. I like anything else we're missing. Uh, Rillaboom, Togekiss, Ndidi, Whimsicott, Urshifu in the top five. Pretty much everything we've covered already. Uh, Amoongus, yep. Politoed, Cinderace, yep. Kingdra, Incineroar, Alola Whack. Uh, Porygon, Dragapult, Primarina, Dusclops is still really high. Please stop playing Dusclops. <laughs> Dusclops isn't the best <laughs> Evilite holder anymore. Uh, you just gotta pair your Porygon 2 with a Fake Out or Follow Me and you're fine. Uh, Hatterene, Tyranitar, Torkoal, Talonflame at 10%. It's because everyone's trying to play with it. It gets priority Tailwind. It gets priority Dual Wing Beat. That too. Also just priority... Airstream is really good. It gets taunt. That's interesting, but that's not priority. No. Will o Wisp, taunt. None of those are priority. No. What's even best is like, sure, you can be priority, but uh. <laughs> the fake out. It's gonna get you. Fake out, don't care about your plus one priority. For sure. Um, yeah. That's pretty much the end of the meta rundown segment you want to talk about the invitational players cup kickoff thing that happened two um, weeks, like three weeks ago and was broadcast last week to be honest i forgot we talked about this and that this was going on <laughs> i will be 100 percent honest uh i watched i watched uh james beck's uh like stream about it afterwards and he went over his match against wolfie glick um, and then I got to watch, I think I watched a little bit of day one of the replays on day one and I watched like none, I missed all of day two. So this was Saturday, Sunday, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, I work those days, yeah. so I don't get a lot of time to actually watch things. Uh, they started real early in the morning too. They started at like 10 or 11 o'clock that yeah, I morning. At, I was already at work. Oh yeah. The problem is, is like they can run it all day, but my downtime when I get home, I have like literally... Like an hour and a half to two hours. Just to eat, shower, sleep. Go to bed, yep. So like the the weekends I work, which is every weekend, I don't get to really do anything. I understand that. So like it, it, it really is a lot of, hey, what did I miss this weekend? Yep. Uh, so this was, it was a fun little event. Uh, I w- kind of wish it was live. It was essentially live. I believe that they did the matches like they pre-recorded all the matches but the commentary was done live that day okay so that was a cool little format thing for them um going over the teams here uh just like a meta breakdown snorlax the number one represented pokemon from the whole kit and caboodle here at five i don't get it uh snorlax was on a lot of these teams a bulky yawn it was the bulky band with self-destruct if it needed to blow up. I believe that's what most of them were. Uh, I know three of them specifically are Gigantamax. Two were regular. Um, 
So See, when, when I played with band, I always played with regular. Yeah, and um, that's usually what it is. I know Wolfie's, uh, Wolfie Glicks and uh, Marcus's were both uh, belly drum sets. They were both yawn belly drum. Then uh, I think Wolfie Glicks was... He had Fire Punch on his. He had belly drum, Fire Punch, Iron Head, and Double Edge, I believe. Yeah, which is... Uh, we we're, were kind of talking about it before because Wolf posted a video of it. Um, he has Fire Punch, which is way to set Sun for his for Venusaur. <laughs> uh, he can also set it with his Hattery, with Didn't Mystical know, Fire. Oh yeah, Mystical Fire. I thought you were gonna say uh, Sunny Day. I'm like, I didn't know it got no, Sunny not Day. Sunny Day. Mystical Fire turns into Max Flare. Yep. Uh, for especially for those Steel types that can cause problems for Hattery. Um, yeah, that, that just seems like good coverage. So going, Especially when, like, above it, there's three excadrills just looking at it. There's a Rillaboom up here, and, like, there's... I know we kind of... Me and you have talked about this, but the team that ended up winning is, like, the only team that actually innovated on the new stuff for that week yep. with the hidden ability starters. Uh, yeah, so first place, Yuri... Uh, Yuri VGC on Twitter is the first place finisher for this thing. Uh, has Cinderace, Rillaboom, Primarina, which has been like my favorite core for Series 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, pairing it with a Ghost Dark and a Ghost Steel and like Fairy Core of Togekiss, Bisharp, and Dustlops. Uh, it, the team, I have this team like built on, on Pokemon. Like, I just have to pull everything out of it and put it together. Uh, it's good. The, this six is really strong. This has been the very common, like, here's these three, here's my fire, water, grass core, here's these support mons, here's Dusclop slapped in there to stop Trick Room. Go forth and do your thing. And it does its thing very well. Yep. Uh, Rillaboom's a great answer to Lapras. Cinderace by Sharp is a very hard lead to play against because you have no idea what Cinderace is going to do to begin with. And then by Sharp benefits from all the moves that Cinderace uses, whether it's a Max Knuckle, Max Steel Spike, or Max Airstream. It's like, sure, I'll, I'll take all of them. Keep it coming, buddy. Like, he'll take all the buffs. Uh, Primarina is a good answer to Dragapult. Uh, Dusclops helps against the Trick Room. Toby kisses you redirection. The team is very well-rounded, very solid. Uh, probably be something, I, if I play in the friendly thing in June here at the end of the month, I think it's this week, it's whatever weekend coming up. I don't know. Uh, if I play in it, this is probably what I do. I'm not expecting to play in it because Series 4 has been kind of meh. I don't think I've played a single rank, like a single match on ladder at all. So, yeah. Uh, that being said, uh, I know Marcus Statter and uh, Wolfie Glick had the same six Pokemon, pretty much. And then Eduardo Cunha and uh, James Beck had the same six. Those, both of those guys had, like, Wolfie and Marcus, I think, didn't actually, like, communicate at all. Which, I mean, to come to the conclusion that this is what you want without communicating and ending up on the same thing seems... There has to be some, like, looky-loo at some point. Like, someone who watched somebody do something and they They and both they just, it. yeah... <laughs> Uh, and then I know James got EDU's team. He even said it like I EDU sent him the team and James made iterations on it, made a couple changes and he went with that. So they're not exact carbon copies. But uh, they might as well be. But the, the mons on their face look like carbon. Uh, it's pretty much a carbon copy. Um, the other the other uh, bottom finisher was Graham Amity. His team was also a JKTMX Snorlax team. But he was using a little bit of a different take. No real actual hard trick room. More utility support and... It's this kind a, of this weird. This is a weird team. So, Whimsicott, Incineroar, Ludicolo, the G-Max, Snorlax, Milotic, and Dracosult. Yeah, this team is real weird, man. Because, like, things that benefit from rain is Ludicolo, Milotic. And then but things like, that... We don't have a gravity user, right? Nothing here gets gravity. Nope. Which Milotic and Dracosult want. Yep. <laughs> There's no I'm strong real support. There's no strong support for Snorlax either. Like Snorlax isn't the best like Undertale one. It doesn't. Its base speed isn't like high enough to even abuse. Yeah, that one that you know, well. like Wolf has speed speed swap on his Rebombi. Like 
that's another way to make Snow Ice good. Like it, it's speed control, you know. So having having that outlet, having the trick room set of of Ndidi Hetterene Dust Clops, like th- that seems fine. I don't know what we're doing here. Like Whimsicott can have trick room if it wants, which whatever. Um, it's not the best trick room user. No, see, it's Neg Six priority, so it gets to go faster than your opponent's trick room user. Ooh. Just saying. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what his team was doing. I didn't get to see much of his team play. Uh, Wolfie's and Marcus's team. I we it's pretty similar to uh, like what Trick Room was doing like really early on before mm-hmm. Series Three, before we got Venusaur and all the fun Sun stuff. Um, yeah, this this is a like Series One team, man. Minus Venusaur. Like if you took Venusaur off and just showed us this five. Slapped a Mudsdale on it. Like, this is mm-hmm. very Series 1 style team. Um, EDU's team and James's team. Uh, pretty standard for what was going on before we got HA starters. Uh, Cinderace, uh, before Cinderace and all that, so it's like Arcanine, uh, Excadrill, Rotom Wash, Dragapult, Togekiss, and then this one has Snorlax. We're used to seeing like Venusaur on EDU's team or like. Like Titar on some other ones, like Ashton Cox's team, which Ashton Cox made the big mistake of playing Incineroar over Arcanine and doing the one thing we tell people not to do. They've played three fighting weaknesses <laughs> all on the same team. Yep. Hence why Conkelder is much higher on this ranking <laughs> in, in these placings <laughs> than everything else. <laughs> um, I believe James had to play Yuri. Uh, in semifinals, and I believe Ashton lost to Alex in the semifinals. That would make sense. Um, which brings us to Alex and Yuri's teams, which are probably the most unique teams here. I mean, we we basically covered Yuri's. Yeah. Like, so talking about Alex is here. Uh, Lapras Wims- Trickroom. Yeah, I mean, in all actuality, we have Incinero- uh, Incineroar, Whimsicott. Lapras, Conkelder, Dusclops, and Dracovish. So we have to go fast and go slow. If we're going fast, we bring Dracovish in. If we're going slow, we bring Conkelder and Lapras together. Uh, Incineroar is our... Incineroar fits in on both of those. Whimsicott is probably more for the go fast mode. Oh, for sure. And then uh, Dusclops obviously is the go slow. Well, hold on. <laughs> we have Trick Room on our Whimsicott. So we can go first. And by first, I mean still last. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Have I ever told you the story of why I couldn't figure out why Wims got Trick Room didn't work? So I thought it was... I figured, for whatever reason, there's some weird, like, programming error that when you give priority to Trick Room, it gave it, like, it had a uh, max overflow and gave it negative priority. (laughs) And then, like, me and Kyle were real confused for, like, three hours of why this wasn't working. And then I finally looked a move up, and it was like, yeah, negative seven priority. I'm like... There you go. (laughs) Problem solved. We were real confused. We are like, dude, it has to to just be, like, a glitch or something, and it's causing it to (laughs) just overflow. (laughs) Yeah. Um, nope, instead I'm just stupid. <laughs> going back through these results and just looking at it, I can see why Kinkel- like the second place team has Kinkelder, and I can see why the first place team has Mons that are really good against Kinkelder, and how everybody else below it just got blown out by, by Kinkelder and Yuri, both. Like it, it's, it's crazy to think that the only team with a fighting Mon versus the teams that all are... Weak to a fighting mon. Right? Uh, three of these teams have two mon, at least two mons weak to it. Four of these teams do. Yeah, because we have... We have Grams, we have EDUs, we have Ashton's, which has three, and we have James's, which has two. Yeah. Thanks, Excadrill Snorlax. Yeah, Excadrill Snorlax, or Incineroar Snorlax, or Incineroar Excadrill T-Tar. Um, and then... The other side of that coin is a lot of these mons are have a problem with uh, with Bisharp as well. Hatterene, Ndidi, Togekiss, 
Whimsicott, Notably, Dust Clops. <laughs> four, four of the five Toga Kisses are below the Bisharp team. The one that's not is playing Togekiss. Yeah, the one that's not below it is also has Togekiss on their team. Yeah. So it's like, to- it, Bisharp is a good day for Bisharp, a good day for Kelder, um, good day for Lapras and Dracovish and Primarina. Not so much for Road on Wash, but they all finished like right next to each other. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that really gets me is like, there's really no weather team outside of Ashton. Like, for, for Sand to be so good for so long, and then you get this eight-player tournament and one person brings it, is what kind of confuses me about this. Uh, I know Cinderace for sure is a big damper on Sand. Being able to max Knuckle and yeah. Oko, like, you can Oko T-Tar, you can Oko non-Sash Extra Drill. Put that Sash on, man. Um, like, it's just so much... Uh, it, and it puts a big damper on Sand in general. Cinderace does, and then Primarina backing up Cinderace. It just, it just the nail. It's the, the yeah, it's just you know lights out. Uh, Rillaboom also being very strong in with all those matchups because it gets high horsepower. It also gets Drain Punch. <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy. You know, your your uh, starter core of Fire, Water, Grass are all good against Sand. Yep. <laughs> Which <laughs> no wonder, <laughs> no wonder we've seen a fall off of sand. Uh, I'm excited to see rain because Cinderace has a harder time beating up the rain mons. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whereas Rillaboom and Rillaboom and Primarina are both good there. Yeah, so I don't, I don't expect the Cinderace Rillaboom Primarina core to go anywhere. Will come series five, but I do expect it to be a little bit harder to just back it up with mons like Togekiss, Bisharp, and Dusclops for sure. They're going to need a little bit more help and a little bit more push. Uh, maybe some kind of Cloud 9, maybe some kind of like um, utility umbrella work to be great. Too bad it's coded incorrectly. Too bad it just doesn't do anything like we want it to. Exactly. You know, I didn't know that was a, like even an item until Wolfie was talking about it on the video. <laughs> I was like, I, I literally had to pause the video and go look up what it was. I'm just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, I had heard about it like right when the game came out, and I was real excited to get it because I heard what it did. But then I read what it did, and it wasn't what people had said it was going to do. I was very sad. Um... But yeah, that's kind of the kickoff invitational. I know I got I got to watch like I said James Beck uh, do his rundown game against Wolfie Glick, and James mopped the floor. <laughs> was this single a limb? Uh, no. How how was this structured? So it was a double elimination for day one. Uh, who if you 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 played through all eight of them, everybody played. Um, if you. Lost for a first game, you go to a loser's bracket. If you won, you go to the winner's bracket. And then they, they played the four matches, got to the loser's bracket. The loser bracket played their matches on day one. And then the winner's bracket played theirs. And then day two, I believe, started with the winners from the loser's bracket and the losers from the winner's bracket. They played theirs. And then we went back up to the winner's bracket because at that point, all the loser's bracket should be done. And we just finished up the day with the winner's bracket, i.e. Yuri. BGC taking over the entire thing. Interesting. Like I said, I got to watch day one. I didn't get to watch day two. But it's interesting for sure. I think that's about it for the week. Anything cool? We've been, oh, v, uh, Draft League ended. Yeah, we're waiting on the... Uh, Jiggly James was able to get a hold of a capture card so he could record the side of the match. So we're going to... See, as of recording, we don't have that video quite yet, but hopefully we'll have a video out on YouTube when this goes... by the time this episode is up and live. Hopefully? Hopefully. Uh, if not, it'll probably be out uh, later this week, probably about Thursday or Friday, depending on when we get stuff done. Yeah, basically. Um, if it is, that, that video link is going to be down in the show notes because I'm going to make Carl do extra work. <laughs> oh boy, a whole link. Um, should have another episode of the Let's Play going live sometime this week. Yeah, um, we'll be missing out on that. Yeah, with 
with the whole moving thing and then fighting with my desk and everything else that's been going on the last couple of weeks, I just have not been able to get it done. Uh, so that's on the agenda for tomorrow to get recorded. So hopefully that'll be recorded and edited and up probably sometime this weekend, if not Monday, Tuesday, sometime next week. Yeah, but uh, and if you are listening to this and are interested in playing in the draft league, uh, the next draft league will begin after the fourth of July, I believe. I have slated that for every for signups to end at five p.m. on the fifth or sixth or whatever that Monday is after the fourth. Uh, that would be the sixth. So the Monday after the fourth, sixth July sixth at five p.m. I need everybody signed up. Uh, we are currently at sixteen players, which was one more than we had last time. Hey, I'll take it, man. Uh, and I, I know there's a couple more people probably interested in it that haven't told me that they want to sign up, but uh, it's open to everyone. Uh, I believe we're doing the same thing we're doing. We did this last year around where we're going to probably draft 8 to 10, depending on how many people we get. Uh, new mons will be legal because we'll be on Series 5 rolls. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if we want to do a 10 or a $20 gift card this time, but uh, probably just stick with the 10 I don't even know if the uh, the finalists knew we were playing for anything. No, I, I kept that one a secret so no one would just like yeah so uh, throw it out there and just have so they actually would have fun. Yeah, we we don't. Carl and I don't even know who won yet because we haven't got the video. Yeah, I, um, we don't want to spoil it, so we're waiting for the video. So yeah, we're gonna hopefully get that and. We're gonna do a little bit of commentary over it. And if I get it, if I get it tonight, late tonight, sometime, you might be coming up and doing an emergency trip up tomorrow. Yeah, I got nothing going on. I think Tiff wants to go over to my mom's house. And I'm just like, no, I don't want to. But <laughs> just drop her off and you come up here. Every <laughs> like, well, we had something go on. I I can't make it. Darn. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, but yeah, draft league, July sixth, five p.m. Last day to sign up. I'm looking to have the draft later that week, depending on everyone's availability. Probably going to stream it like we did last time. It was a lot of fun doing that. Um, Probably should get the uh, availability filled out in the spreadsheet like we did last time. Yeah. I'm going to probably just structure it the same way as the last one. Copy paste my rules over, change my dates. Yeah, basically. Um, If we we break the 16-player barrier, we'll do probably five rounds of Swiss. Uh, I doubt we're going to hit more than 32. I'll, I'd be surprised if we hit more than 32, but we might. If we do, we'll have to figure something out, because uh, 32 is going to be a lot. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now that we've got... I know we're at 60-plus listeners. Uh, this past week exploded Dude, I podcast. Could not explain it, but I absolutely love it. Uh, average average listeners is like 65 on on like according to anchors numbers alone that's not counting the people who watch it on youtube which is another like 40 or 50 people so um, if you're if you're not listening on youtube go on over to our youtube page which that that's going to be down in the show notes make sure you go uh subscribe to the page hit the bell to get notifications go pick a random video drop a couple likes and a comment or two on it and you know just go watch the let's plays those are fun and i like editing them I'm probably going to start my egg lock next week if I can get uh, get enough people to get me eggs. Probably going to stream that Wednesday. I have a box of just random eggs. I don't know what they are. Oh, yeah, because you, you did this. No, I hatched all those. I have another box of eggs. <laughs> I don't know what they are. I hatched all my egg lock eggs. Um, I don't know what these are. I think they're from Quentin. I don't know. Well, the big thing is I want to be able to have uh, the DLC mods in it, too. So... Might have to might have to take a day, uh, sometime sometime this week and get all that set up. Because if so, I'm gonna probably stream that on Wednesday. Uh, let's make sure you get your let's play finished first. I know we're really close. We're on. Where did we leave off? Did we beat price? I think we we're going into price. Okay. Dude, we're we're nowhere near actually being done because there's round two. I know, <laughs> but like at least get the first round done. Oh yeah, for like, sure. Like at sure. least get the Jota leaders done. For sure. Yeah, we're I'm gonna try to do all of it, but man, is that gonna be a time commitment? Oh yeah. And I mean, if if it does well enough on YouTube, I'm going to. If it doesn't, I'm probably still going to. Yeah. Like. Um. But yeah, I think that's everything we need to talk about this week. Yeah. Some shameless self plugging here at the end. That's usually where it's at. Yeah. It's whatever. 
People people who want to hear it will hear it. Which is at least 50% of you. Yeah, cool. I'll take it. Numbers no numbers don't lie. Internet doesn't lie. Get us out of here. Alright. Um make sure you go follow us on Twitter at LR Lessons, myself at Carter Noble25, Carl at musical underscore thirty three. Uh Carl and I are both also on Twitch. Uh, you can find myself at Mr. Missouri25 on basically everywhere but Twitter. Uh, and Carl at Musical on basically everywhere except Twitter. <laughs> yeah, for the most part. So uh, if you really like what we do, you can always leave, it, uh, leave a sub on there for, for us. Um, make sure you go subscribe to the YouTube channel, which we, we already plugged. Um, join the Discord if you haven't already. If you found us through Reddit, that'd be cool. Let us know in the Discord. If you found us from YouTube, if you found us on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcast, wh- wherever you come from us from, uh, just drop it in. Drop it in the Discord. I'm actually really curious as to what draws people into joining the community compared to just listening. It's Reddit, dude. Reddit does. Reddit, Reddit brings in, Reddit brings has brought so in a people. lot. Could not explain it, but. They right. may not all be active like as much as some of these other people, as much as some of our other users are. But Reddit brings people in. I don't, just don't understand. I'll take it. How or why? But I'll, yeah, I'm not. I'm not mad at it. I think. I think we're getting close to like 75 people on Discord. Yeah, we're getting close. Which, to that. dude, that's way more than I ever anticipated. Oh yeah, no, that, that, that's actually like a decent server size. We're gonna have to like actually like maybe make a mod or two. <laughs> because I can't I can't be on I'm not dude anymore. there's four days of the week I'm not on it you know yeah I, I, I I'm pretty much there on it every day and it is kind of taking over my life and I might need to back <laughs> on it so um uh, let's see what else we got um I got a whole lot of nothing else I can't think of anything uh next week we should have our team report from our from one of the uh, finalists from the Draft League, uh, Zeno's got his team report for the Draft League set up. So we're probably going to go over that, look over over all that information. Um, I know we both played him, and we both I got beat. stomped. Uh, my game was actually really close. I got stomped. My I lost to a range. If I didn't get beat by the range, if I didn't lose to the range on the Sucker Punch, I think I could have won that game. But, uh, yeah. So we'll have his team report next week. Uh, probably some more meta stuff we'll talk about for Series 5, getting you ready for that. Probably some more solid teams figured out instead of just talking about synergies. We'll actually have Series 5 up next week, I think. Uh, right? No, not quite yet. Not by the time we record. I thought it goes by, live on the first. By the time by the time we get to recording, it'll be like day one. Day one I'll take day. it. <laughs> it'll be day one or day two, which cool like, whatevs it's just whatever so i got a whole lot of nothing else man i'm ready to get out of here same all right everybody have a good week peace